Understanding herbs is extremely important. In today's world, people take herbs for granted. Some think herbs are simply weeds that make people think they are being healed. Even after all the positive research and reports, they will never see herbs as medicine. The current day Western medicine world has become so brainwashed to think medicine only comes in a pill or injections made by scientists in a laboratory with chemicals you can't pronounce. Unfortunately, these toxic chemicals can have profound effects on the liver and other parts of the body. Even if it is deemed safe now, 10 years from now, you could have repercussions from that one simple toxic medication. Why not stick to safe, non-man-made medications that can grow in your backyard? Today at Survival Homestead Teaching Farm, we want to help you understand plantain. In survival situations, you need to know several herbs for first aid purposes. This is one of those herbs. Although it shares a name and is often confused with the banana plantain, it is not the same. Broadleaf or narrow leaf plantain is very widely found in many backyards. The plantain herb is an herbaceous perennial. It can be eaten for culinary purposes in salads or soups, but it can also be used to make teas, made into tinctures, or used as a poultice. It is often found in skincare products. In general, there are two species of plantain. Plantago lanceolata, also known as narrowleaf plantain, and Plantago major, also known as broadleaf plantain. Narrowleaf plantain has three to five prominent ribs that stripe its long, narrow leaves. Broadleaf plantain has five to nine prominent veins that stripe their wide oval shaped leaves. One of the most popular traditional uses for this herb is for lung health. Plantain leaves are rich in mucilage, which gives the respiratory tract protection. It moistens and coats the airways with a protective layer, which reduces the irritation that causes a dry cough. Researchers in Bulgaria found that plantain leaves were effective against chronic bronchitis. Containing glycerin and pectin, plantain exerts a soothing effect on the lungs, provoking the production of more mucus, which helps to relieve discomfort and irritation. Another use for plantain is for boosting the immune system. Plantain leaves are high in vitamins A and C, and the high tanning content imparts astringent properties, which reduce inflammation and combat infection by depriving bacteria of nutrients. Plantain can also help with digestion because of its anti-inflammatory properties and high mucilage content. Along with digestion, it also works wonders on gastrointestinal health. It can treat chronic colitis, acute gastritis, enteritis, and intercolitis due to its soothing properties. The use that I have personally found very beneficial is how it pulls infections out of the skin. It draws out poisons or stingers from bees that could potentially cause an allergic reaction. It also stops bleeding, heals bruises, alleviates ulcers, and prevents infections. I am personally highly allergic to wasps or bee stings. Being stung could be a life or death situation for me. Unfortunately, on the homestead, I am gardening outside a lot, and I have been stung. After being stung, I immediately find plantain in the yard toss some in my mouth and chew it up. I then pack it onto the area where I was stung. I wrap it up for about an hour. This is called a spit poultice. When I take the poultice off, the stinger is out and everything has been drawn out of the skin. I can't even tell the place where I was stung. As a doctor of natural medicine, I knew this information. I learned it in school and I always knew it was good on the skin for these purposes, but I surprised myself when I used a spit poultice for the first time. 
I was surprised at how great it worked. Times a spit poultice can be a bit messy, so from here on out, I can always reach for my plantain tincture that I have made. I put a spray top on the bottle and all I need to do is spray it onto the affected area and let it dry. You can find more information on how to make a tincture or even more on the plantain herb in this book. It has a wealth of information for beginners and I highly recommend it. I will leave a link in the description. As for precautions, there are no precautions. However, with any herb, it is best to take precautions when pregnant or breastfeeding. If you don't know much about this herb, please learn it. Here at Survival Homestead Teaching Farm, we want to open your eyes to the herbs that you need to understand and use in survival situations. We very much appreciate you watching this video. Please continue to help us help you by liking, sharing, and subscribing.